Hey guys, this is Fred from Pre-Fly Games and this is episode 4 in how to build an online first person shooter. In this episode we'll add support for player names and the ability to send server messages to clients and also for clients to communicate with the server. So let's get started with how to implement this in Unity. So first of all we want to add support for uh, adding the player's name to the game so we want to have uh, the ability for players to add a nickname to their player and we want to display this above the player so we know who is who so let's go into prefabs let's open our network player prefab so here is our little dude and uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to have um, their name tag uh, above here uh, so uh, we want it to be a part of uh, our model or a child of our model so it follows uh, everywhere uh, this model goes so let's go into game objects UI and uh, let's add a text mesh pro and uh, you will get a message that well we need the TMP essentials so just uh, let's import that and uh, let it load for a little bit uh, all right so now it's done and uh, it actually put it on the player UI canvas, which is not the one we want. Uh, so uh, let's create a new uh, UI canvas. Uh, right, and uh, we will change this into a world space canvas. And uh, where did it go, my text mesh? Uh, it went into the UI, I think. Right, here we are. Uh, so let's move that into the canvas and uh, it, a world space canvas will follow the player wherever it is uh, in the world so it's not uh, so it's related to uh, the rotation and orientation in the world however canvases is super big uh, when they are moved uh, into uh, uh, the world uh, because of uh, the units because they are now in unit units instead of pixel units so we need to scale that down by a lot so let's just go with 0 0.1 for start there and we'll see where it wind up and let's put it on 0 0 0 and uh, here we go all right so that's a bit better so let's move our canvas it's still uh, very big uh, so let's change that into maybe 500 is an okay size I guess and maybe 80 something like that and move it so that's that could be a reasonable size I guess maybe we need to make it a little bit smaller anyway uh, something like that awesome so our text let's uh, scale it so it scales with uh, the size of uh, our canvas and uh, let's uh, zero out everything so it becomes centered. Uh, there we go. And uh, let's uh, change our size of our text mesh box to actually fit. I'm not sure why it does, doesn't scale this automatically, but anyways, let's uh, then center it. And uh, then we can put it to auto size so it fills up and we actually need to drag it up. Yeah, something like that. And uh, here we will have the player nickname. And uh, let's center it. And uh, yeah, it's 72. It's as big as it gets for now. Uh, so, and the scale can be one, All right? A lot of uh, things we need to change. Uh, awesome. So now we have our, our player name here, and it's in the canvas. Uh, oh, sorry, it's in the this canvas. So, actually, our text box has changed its size so it doesn't fit right now we're sort of done uh, so that looks okay and uh, let's make sure that it's fully centered 
And now we can get rid of that name. So we don't have to display a name as a starter. Let's change our name so it uh, makes sense to us. Player Nick name. And it's going to be a text and canvas. Let's call it world space canvas. So now we are, have the ability to have the player's name above uh, our uh, little uh, dude. And uh, it's a text mesh pro that scales with the size of our canvas. So now we want to enhance our player so that the nickname is coming from the network. Uh, so let's go into scripts and uh, network and let's open our network player. All right, so the first thing we want to take in is we want to add a new variable and it's going to be a text mesh pro U UI uh, so that we can change the player's nickname. And uh, we need to start using TM Pro for that to actually work. So that's great. And uh, now what we want to do is we want to have a network variable. Uh, so similar to what we've had before, we are going to use um, the uh, well a network variable uh, to uh, handle the player's nickname. So let's add a network string. Uh, so this is a special uh, type that uh, is created by Fusion, and it's uh, to make sure that we are managing the size of the string because uh, otherwise it's sort of dynamic. So now we're saying that it's going to be a maximum size of 16 uh, because that's all we need. And uh, it's gonna be called nickname and um, we are going to have uh, react to when it's changing so that we can also change uh, the player's nickname. Uh, so let's scroll down and let's uh, add that. Uh, so what we will do is uh, we will add an on nickname change which is going to be a private void and uh, when this happens we are going to say that okay uh, nickname change for player to nickname uh, for the game object. Uh, so we're going to write the game object and the nickname they have received. And we are going to set uh, the text mesh pros text to the nickname and use two strings so it converts properly. Uh, now, uh, as we said before, this is not uh, what is going to be called here uh, because we need it to be a static uh, verb or a static um, uh, function. So let's add our static on change like we have done before. So static on change uh, on nickname changed and uh, we are going to call change behavior on nickname change which is this. Uh, so that's uh, all we need for uh, the ability to actually show the nickname of the player. Uh, but we also need a way of actually setting uh, the player's nickname. And um, as uh, we remember before, only the server is, a, or, or the server or uh, the input, uh, or sorry, the, uh, I can't speak today. Uh, uh, the uh, the authority, the host authority, uh, is the only one that uh, can change uh, these variables. So we need a way for clients when they are joining to tell the server that hey, my name is uh, is whatever, and uh, you should be using that for now. Uh, so what we will do is uh, we will do that through an RPC. Uh, so the client will send an RPC message to the server uh, and or the state authority, so now I'm using the right words, uh, and uh, it will tell that, uh, hey, this is actually my name, I'm going to be called this, and uh, the, the, ser the state authority will start using that uh, name and will show it to all other clients. Awesome. So uh, how do we do an RPC? Uh, well. An RPC needs to be in a network behavior, and uh, we already have a network behavior. Uh, so what we do then is we're going to say that, okay, our RPC uh, 
has some uh, parameters to it. And what we're gonna say that, okay, the source is going to be the input authority. So it's gonna be sent from whoever has the input authority and it's going to be sent to the state authority. So it's gonna be sent to our server or the host. Uh, so it's going to be called rpc underscore set nickname and uh, it's going to take in a string and uh, which is the nickname uh, so what we will do is that we're going to debug log it and say that okay we got our rpc set nickname nickname and then we will use this dot nickname with nickname so it takes this variable and stores it in our uh, class uh, variable with the same name uh, awesome. So uh, that's all we need to actually receive the RPC, uh, but we also need to send our RPC. Uh, so in in this code, we have determined that okay, we have the input authority, so we are the local player when this code is execu executed. So this code is going to be executed when we are spawned. So that means that we have joined the world and uh, we uh, have spawned ourselves. So once we have done that, we can say that, okay, uh, we are going to set our nickname. And uh, our nickname, we need to have a way of actually setting a nickname for the local player. So what are we going to be called? And we will create a new scene for this so that we can take in the input from the player and actually store it somehow. And just to make it super simple, we are going to use the player prefs. So the player prefs is a local storage that uh, can be used. Uh, and uh, it, uh, I mean, you can use uh, other things like a game manager and things like that uh, to store variables temporary but we're going to make it super simple for this tutorial and we're going to use player prefs so that means whatever is in our string player nickname is going to be set as our uh, nickname through the rpc okay so let's save that and go back into unity so now we need to create a, a way of actually fetching the input from the user so let's create a new scene and we can take a basic uh, URP, that's fine. And uh, let's save this as uh, in scenes and we'll call it main menu. All right, let's add it to our build as well. So that I've done that and put it uh, as the first. So it's loaded first uh, when uh, the game is starting. Okay, awesome. So uh, in this, we want to create uh, a UI object and we want to take uh, in an uh, input. So uh, let's uh, add an input field and it's gonna be a text mesh pro. Uh, here we go. And let's make our canvas a screen space overlay. That's correct. Let's uh, scale it with uh, the screen size and 920, 1080 mesh and we'll say that it's gonna match half with half. I think that was the setting we had before anyway. Uh, awesome. And uh, let's take our input field and we'll put it on the center of the screen and let's make it, I don't know, bigger. So 580, something like that. And uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's change our enter text uh, so it becomes I don't know, I don't like this gray stuff. So let's take our placeholder and change that into full black and fully transparent. All right, there we go. And let's say that it's gonna be, um, it's gonna say enter player name. And let's center it. And uh, let's, uh, yeah, we can auto size it for now. And uh, let's, that's fine. Enter player name and uh, then our text. We need to use the same color dome. Let's move that. All right. Input field, right? So um, let's uh, make it a little bit more interesting. So we'll go into UI. Let's uh, add a panel so that we have uh, something that 
contains the whole screen. Let's reduce the size of it a little bit, something like that. And uh, let's change that into some blue, maybe something like that. And let's just increase it. And the panel is going to be the background. So, all right. And let's add another UI. We need some type of nice game name. Uh, ultimate online APS game. All right, so that's what it's going to be called. Some nice title. And let's make it bigger. And then let's enter that. And let me bold 80. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And uh, even bigger. 900. Oh, 1000 maybe. All right, ultimate online FPS game. Uh, perfect. So now we have a very nice uh, welcome screen and uh, it says enter player name. Uh, so this is going to be good enough for us. So let's save that. And uh, then we will create a new script. So let's go in uh, into scripts and let's call it uh, a new folder for it, UI. And uh, then we need uh, a name for it. So let's go with um, main menu UI handler and uh, let's assign that to our canvas. Oh, we need to wait for it to compile. So that will take a little bit time. All right, let's drag and drop that and uh, let's save and go into uh, our, uh, well, let's open the script in Wishes Studio. So uh, let's add using TM Pro and then we will take in our a new variable and it's going to be our TM input field and uh, we can get rid of our update function and uh, actually when we are starting up we want to set uh, our um, input field if we already have a name to that field so let's use our player prefs and check do we have a key called player nickname if we do then let's set our input field text to it and we actually don't need those brackets so let's get rid of them there we go and uh, so if we have the or already set our name let's uh, use that as the default uh, and uh, actually I didn't uh, add a button to our UI so that was a little bit stupid but uh, let's do that later on and uh, what we will say that okay we are going to have a new function called on join a game clicked so if somebody is uh, pressing that button then we should store the player nickname and get started so let's store uh, our the player nickname by using player preps, player preps, uh, set string with the player nickname uh, from the input field. And then we're going to save it and then we are going to load our scene with uh, the scene manager. So later on we can create a, a lobby for it but for now we're just going to load the scene straight up so it starts with our network stuff. And we need to use our Unity Engine scene management for this to work. Okay, so let's store that and go back into Unity. Uh, so let's select our canvas and our input field. Let's drag that into the slot. And we also need to create uh, our join button. So let's go UI and uh, where are you? Button, Text Mesh Pro. Awesome. And uh, we need to make it a lot bigger. So 500 times, oh, let's make it a little bit less big, 400 times 100. And uh, let's center it on the screen and a bit below. And uh, let's add our text and let's just write a join. And uh, let's auto size it 
and let's make it bold. Okay, maybe we should change the button as well so it becomes some other color. Something like that. Awesome color selection, I think. All right, so when we are clicking our button here, it's going to raise an event uh, on click. And uh, let's uh, click the plus sign so we can assign something to this. And uh, not our directional light, our canvas. Let's drag that in there. And then we have our main menu. And let's assign our on join game clicked. Okay. So if we store this now and take it for a spin. All right, let's uh, wait for it to load and then we can enter our name and... Uh, oh, uh, so it's tiny, so we can fix that later. And let's hit our join button. And uh, then we have loaded the scene and well, oh, I fell off the world and we have some errors. Let's, let's look at what that is. Uh, nickname changed for player to Freddy, so that's good. And we have uh, then received our RPC set nickname, Freddy. Uh, so that's working fine. Uh, but then we have a null reference exception, object reference not set to an instance of an object. Uh, so it means that we have forgot to assign our uh, text mess pro actually. Uh, so let's stop our game and let's go into project and let's find our player prefab, network player. And uh, if we find our player prefab or network player, we can see that, okay, our nickname here is uh, not, uh, or actually this one nickname TM is not set at all. So we need to set that. So let's drag and drop our, uh, our text mesh pro in there. And uh, then we can as well fix this problem, which was that the text, uh, our placeholder text is using auto size and um, with a maximum of 72 and it is fully centered, but our text when we're typing something is not centered and it's not using auto size. All right, so let's save that and try it again. All right, so uh, let's press the join button and uh, let's check that in the console that we don't have any more errors. So yeah, zero errors, zero warnings. And we have the nickname changed. So let's bring in a few more clients. Let's reduce this one. And I've already compiled a few clients so we can get some extra ones. So let's uh, have our name here and we'll call one of them Eddie and we'll call the the other one is going to be called best. Uh, so if we run around, we can see that, okay, we have uh, a guy called Eddie. And uh, where's the other one? Uh, he's hiding somewhere. I'm not sure where he is actually. There we go. And we have another one called best. And if we take one of these clients, we can see that, yeah, okay, we have our host somewhere as well. I'm not sure where he went. There we go. Freddy is standing there. So we have Freddy and Best and Eddie joining the game. Uh, so that's uh, perfect. So now we have uh, the ability to set our nicknames. And uh, the next thing that we're going to add is support for some messages in game like Freddy shot Best or Freddy shot Eddie or Eddie, uh, well, fell off the world. Uh, so let's get started with that. So let's uh, exit our clients and uh, let's stop our main game. So uh, let's take our panel and copy that and uh, let's, uh, because we're gonna re reuse it and then let's go into the player UI canvas and uh, let's create a new uh, UI canvas. So it only updates that part of the messages that we want. Then we'll take our panel and make it a child of that and let's make sure that the scale is set to one and that it fills the whole area. And then we, we can take our canvas and we're not going to stretch it. We're going to have it as a fixed size, but anchored to the left part of the screen. And uh, then we want to reduce this, uh, the size of this. So uh, our canvas right now, that's not our canvas. <laughs> Let's reduce the size of it. And uh, 
move it up a little bit so it's attached to the edge of the screen something like that and uh, let's make it a little bit smaller no, not our panel or canvas yeah something like that and then make sure that it's scaled to one because that's what we want Hold on one one all right now we can actually change the size of it of the canvas there we go uh, yep so that's perfect then we want to create uh, our text messages that are going to be in here uh, so let's create uh, uh, a child and it's going to be a layout group so let's just call it layout group and uh, it's going to be a vertical layout group and this one we can size it to 100% of the size of the canvas and let's center it to the upper center and then uh, in this we want to have our messages our text messages so let's add that a ui text mesh pro and uh, add it and then we can change it to in in game message and the canvas let's change that to in game message as well so we know what it is uh, perfect uh, so let's uh, change the size of our uh, or actually let's not do it that way. Uh, let's have the layout group control the size of this uh, so we can control the width and the height of it. Awesome. So now we actually uh, are filling up um, the whole area so we can have a text that is pretty long and uh, let's add some margin so it looks better. Maybe, I don't know, 10, let's try 10 and uh, five on the top five on right and five or, or ten on the right something like that and uh, let's decrease our panels transparency to something less okay so if we save this now uh, then we have uh, well our in-game messages then we need to create a new script so let's go into scripts UI create new script and call it in-game messages UI handler and open that in Visual Studio then we need to use uh, TM Pro and let's take in our text mesh pros UIs that we created so we're gonna have three of them so let's make an array of it uh, so it's gonna be exactly three on screen and uh, we can get rid of our update function uh, because we only want to update our text mesh pros when there is a change we don't want to run that in the update because it takes on an unnecessary performance from the game all right so then we're gonna do it sort of the lazy man's way and that is we're gonna have a public function called on game message received and it's gonna be uh, include a, a message uh, so you could actually create this uh, through some event or something like that but we're gonna do it a little bit lazy to keep this tutorial simple so when we receive the message let's add it to our debug log so we know that we have received an in-game message and write what it was and uh, then we want to uh, show the three latest messages so we don't want to show anything else and we don't want to dynamically add text mesh uh, to this because it's just going to take performance so we're going to use a queue so let's create a queue and uh, the queue works uh, in the following way well you add a text uh, to it so it's going to be on the first element and then you add another text element and a third and uh, when the, the queue contains three messages or more, then we are going to delete the oldest message. So in our queue, let's add, when we receive the message, let's enqueue the message. So it's added to our queue. And then if we have more than three messages, then let's dequeue the oldest one. So then we have the th three latest messages on screen at all times. And then we want to loop through our queue. So let's create a variable queue index. 
and then we'll run a for each loop on it. So uh, we'll go through all the messages that we have in our message queue and uh, we'll take our text mesh and uh, of our queue index and update it to whatever it is in the message queue. And then we will increase our queue index. So when a message is updated, we are going to then just update our three text mesh pros with whatever is in the queue. If there's less messages than uh, three, then it, it's just gonna update those anyway. Okay, so let's save that and go back into Unity. So let's take our in-game messages and let's delete them so it doesn't say new text. And then we'll take our in-game messages UI handler that we just created and uh, let's make it a size of three. And then we will actually reverse this order so that the newest uh, is actually going to be placed on top. Uh, so the first element is gonna be uh, the, the latest uh, text that we received. Uh, yeah, perfect. So let's save that. So now we have the ability to display these messages, but they need to uh, arrive somewhere. So we need to create uh, a new script for it. We can actually reuse another script, but uh, I prefer to keep it tidy. So let's create a new script and let's call that network in game messages. And let's open that in Visual Studio. So let's get rid of our update function because we don't need that. And uh, we are going to do this with RPCs. So uh, we need to be using Fusion and it will be a network behavior. And uh, we need to uh, actually use our in-game message UI handler. So let's make that a variable public in-game message UI handler. And uh, then uh, what we want is we want to be able to uh, send RPCs. So let's add the RPC like we did before. And uh, this one will have slightly different parameters. So it will uh, be the source of the state authority. So only the server will be sending messages and the targets will be all. So it will send uh, this RPC in-game message to everything in the game. Uh, so perfect, uh, let's add a debug so we know that we have uh, uh, received our RPC uh, in-game message. And uh, what we want to do then is we want to add it to our uh, in-game message UI handler. So let's just check that it's not null before we actually try to add that. Uh, awesome. So. Uh, what we will have here is uh, we are going to say that we need to be able to call this from other scripts. Uh, so we actually, let's remove the public because we don't need it to be public. We can need it, uh, we, we want it to be a sort of private. Uh, so it's not called from another script. We want uh, to have a, another public variable called send in-game RPC messages so we can just format it a little bit. We'll take in the username and the message. So when we have received that, we are going to do some formatting. Uh, so we are going to say RPC in-game message. Uh, we're going to make the nickname bold and the message will follow after that. So perfect. Let's save that and uh, go back into Unity. So let's go into our prefabs and the player prefab network player so we're going to attach this uh, new uh, message uh, handler that we just created uh, i mean you could create another object that is uh, just responsible for that and maybe that's nicer from a design point of view but right now we will just add it uh, here so it handles the messages in in, uh, in the player directly so network in-game messages here we have it and we need to assign our uh, canvas that we created for that. So in-game canvas, here we go. And uh, let's save that. So then let's open our network player in Visual Studio. Then uh, let's uh, add a variable just so that we, as a server, want to say that, okay, a player has joined. 
so we just don't want to do it once and we're going to react to when they are setting the nickname. So if later on in the game we want to have the ability to change the name in game, we only want to send this join message once. Uh, then we need a reference to our uh, uh, network uh, in game messages. And that is going to be a part of our uh, player object or, or the game object. So uh, we can assume already that, uh, okay, we can use our awake and fetch our network in game messages uh, directly with get component. So then we have it that cached. And uh, what we want to do then is uh, when a uh, player has joined, then we want to send our nice uh, RPC. So uh, let's go and say that, okay, if uh, our is public uh, not sent. So if we haven't sent our message yet, then uh, let's do that. Uh, so we will use our networking game and uh, we will use our send in-game RPC message. Uh, with the user nickname that we have received and we want to have uh, the text uh, joined after that and then we will just set this that okay we have actually sent it okay perfect uh, so uh, this will be executed by uh, the the state authority because that's the one that received this and also in our RPC we have specified that this is the one that should be able to send it. Uh, then we can do the same thing for if the player has left. Uh, so uh, if object has state authority we actually don't need to make that ch check but let's uh, that's, let's do that anyway. And uh, then we're going to use the message left. Uh, so the, the nickname is uh, this. Uh, so we need to just make a two string and it should be all happy with that. Uh, so the reason why it actually works here is because we're getting it as the string variable. Uh, so. Perfect. Uh, let's save this and take it for a spin in Unity. So let's start our first client. And join the game. So then we can see it. Okay, Freddy joined, which is awesome. And then we bring in another client. So let's take this and uh, let's bring that in as well. And let's change the name to Eddie and let's join. So uh, now we have some interesting problems. Uh, we can see that uh, on this client we have Eddie joined, but on this client uh, we have uh, some type of problems with the text. So there are two problems with this. One is that uh, the text is actually not uh, updated properly. So this is the player uh, 2. Uh, and uh, if we look at uh, this player, he has a, ca a canvas and uh, it is actually displaying the canvas of that player. So if we delete or disable that object, we can see that, okay, so uh, for some reason we have two canvases and uh, the text is actually sent to this uh, local player. So that's not what we intended. We only want to have one player UI canvas active and we want to ensure that this player actually receives uh, the information and this player's canvas is actually detached because it's attached to our camera which is free floating now so it's here uh, so that means we have to think a little bit differently when we are assigning this and make sure that uh, we are updating this canvas for the local player and not each individual canvases for all the players. Actually, we should be disabling this because there should only be one player UI canvas. 
uh, the camera is not enabled, but the UI canvas is still enabled. So we need to make sure that we are disabling that and fixing that. So let's take care of that now. So the way that we can fix this, uh, there are probably many solutions, but uh, what we want then is our UI. We only want to fetch the players, the local players UI canvas. We don't want anything else. Uh, so we can do that uh, by actually changing a bit of our code. Uh, so let's go into network player and open that in Visual Studio. So the challenge we have here is that the network player, when it's starting up, it is actually uh, disabling the main camera. And uh, if uh, we uh, and, and, and then later on it will uh, also attach uh, or detach the camera. Uh, so it means that we actually don't have any access anymore uh, after this has been uh, executed uh, because we can't say that okay our local player that we are caching we can't access uh, the UI from that. Uh, so we need to change that. So let's add a public variable local camera handle handler uh, so that we can actually access that. Because once the code has run, uh, then uh, this camera has been detached, but we, we can actually access it anyway. So let's save that. And now we can go into a network in game messages. Uh, so it's taking in the public uh, in-game messages UI handler, but that's not the correct one. Uh, so let's remove the public uh, in front of it. And then we will check that, okay, if, uh, if, if it's null, then we are actually going to find it from the network player, the local player, its local camera handler, and get the component in children in-game messages UI handler. So that takes care of the first problem and then we are also checking that if it's uh, not null then we are actually updating it. So that takes care of the first problem. Now we will direct the messages to the correct UI handler which is going to be the, locals, uh, the, the local player's UI handler. The second part is actually disabling the UI. So we can just take this in and say that okay we're going to have a public uh, game uh, object and it's going to be the uh, local UI and uh, if we are not if we are the remote player then uh, we can disable the local UI there we go oh sorry Alright, so now we can save and go back into Unity. So now we need to go into our uh, player prefab. Let's open the network player. And uh, here we have our network player. So we need to assign a, a couple of things the local UI. Uh, so uh, player UI canvas, this is the one. And the local camera handler. So where is our local camera? That's the one. Uh, perfect. So let's save that and uh, take it for another spin. So let's start our client. Ready. And I'll bring in some additional clients that I just compiled. So let's join the one called best and then we'll take one called Eddie. Uh, so now we can see that, okay, our, um, uh, our main client uh, says that Eddie joined uh, and uh, th then best joined and uh, Freddy joined last. Uh, so, uh, so if we look at uh, our Eddie client, which is this one, he's looking at the best one. Uh, so uh, yeah, now we have this message system that is working. Uh, 
there is still, however, one slight problem with it, and that, uh, well, when I'm shooting somebody, nothing will actually happen. Oh, yeah, and the text will remain, uh, even though the player has died. Uh, so that's uh, that's uh, something we can easily fix. Uh, but there is another issue, and that's uh, if we take this client and we leave, uh, then it's gonna say that uh, Freddy left. Uh, but Freddy is my main client, so he didn't leave for sure. And if we leave this uh, other client, we can see that, okay, uh, best left, Freddy left and Ed left. Uh, but this client is still here. And the reason why this is happening is because the server is ex executing uh, the code on all the clients. Uh, so we need to figure out that uh, we actually, we are just doing it for the one who actually left. So we need to change our code for that to work properly. So let's exit play mode. So the problem that we're having is caused by the network player. So let's open that in Visual Studio. So the problem that we are seeing is that uh, this uh, event, player left, is called on all of the clients that is uh, connected to our game. So if we have three uh, clients connected, uh, then it means that this code will be executed three times by the state authority because there are three uh, game objects connected or three network uh, players connected. Uh, and on top of that, the, the player who actually left is the player ref. Uh, it's the, this player. And if we just type out the name nickname that is associated with this network player, it means that we are not actually finding the correct uh, player. So we need a way of correlating our player ref with our actual network object, the network player. So how do we do that? Well, Photon Fusion actually supplies a way of doing that for games that has the setup where the player is controlling one object. So what we do need to do is we need to set the player object and we supply the object input authority and our object. So by doing this we can say that okay we are actually uh, th this is going to be this player's object. So when we are coming into our, our player left uh, then uh, then actually we need to do some more things. So as we said before, we, we, we know that the nickname here is not the correct one, so we can't just write that. Uh, rather, what we need to do is uh, we need to make some checks before that. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to say, okay, can we get uh, the objects uh, network ID or the players uh, object network object. So we use runner try get player object, supply it with the player, and it will return a network object. And in this case, we will call the player left network object because that's the player who left. Uh, so this will still will execute on all the clients. So what we need to do is make sure that we are actually receiving this player. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, we can just compare it. So we can say that if the player left network object is the same as the object, then it means it's this one. Uh, and now <laughs> it becomes a little bit more complicated uh, because of our design choice of having our RPC on the actual, actual client. Uh, because we could go in and say that, okay, we're gonna send the RPC uh, from this object uh, but as it's disconnecting and it's leaving the game, chances are pretty big that it won't actually have time to send the RPC before it has already left. So then it will just be lost. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to do some, uh, some dirty tricks. So we'll use our local player because this is, uh, well, the host in, in our case, the last player that's going to be still alive. Uh, and connected to the game. We're going to get his component for network in-game messages and we're going to use that to send the in-game RPC message. We're going to take the players uh, who left network object, get its player uh, network players nickname to string and then type left. Oof. So that was a bit of a dirty code there, I think, a little bit anyway. Uh, but hopefully that should solve our problem. So let's save that and try it again in Unity. 
So let's uh, start our game. And uh, let's join with Freddy. And then I'll bring in a client that I had uh, already ops prepared. So there we go. And another one. All right, so let's join Eddie. And uh, we called the other one best, I think. So Eddie joined. And best joined. All right, so now we can see that all three clients are reporting that uh, Best and Eddie and Freddy has joined, except for Best, who is the last client he only knows about himself. So let's go and disconnect the Best client. So we can see that on our other two clients, we can see that Best left, and uh, that's the only thing. And uh, let's leave on with Eddie, and we can see that Eddie left. Okay, so that solves uh, that. So while we're at it, let's add some more uh, messages. So let's go into character movement handler and handle the case where the player is falling off the world. Uh, so uh, what we want, we want to make sure that first of all, that we are getting our network in-game messages so that we can handle that. And uh, in our awake function, we can get that. So let's do that. And uh, then uh, when we are uh, falling outside of the map, here we go, uh, then we want to type some type of uh, message when that happens. Uh, so uh, we'll use our, uh, we already had a debug log for that, so let's use our um, network in-game messages and send an RP, uh, send an in-game RPC message, uh, but we need our network player with a nickname, uh, and then we're going to type in fell off the world uh, so let's add our network player as well and uh, we can just fetch that uh, with get component as per usual all right perfect so let's save that and now we should get a message when we're falling off the world then let's do the same thing for the HP, HP handler so whenever somebody is getting killed we want to have a message about that uh, so let's add our network in-game messages and our network player and let's uh, get those in the awake function. Uh, so then we have our on take damage and that is uh, something we need to modify because now we also need to know who did the damage. So we know that we took damage but we need to know who caused the damage as well. So let's add a string damage caused by player nickname. And uh, when we are dying, uh, then we can say that, okay, uh, we have uh, died. So uh, in that case, we are going to, before we are um, sending this, we're setting the debug log. Uh, let's do a network in-game message, send in-game RPC. And then we say the name uh, of the player first, who killed the other player and we're using bold so uh, it becomes a little bit nicer to read awesome uh, so let's save that and uh, go back into unity so now we have an error because uh, we have uh, not provided an argument which is required by the hp handler so let's click that and uh, on take damage now takes in the nickname of the player who did the damage uh, so we need to get that uh, so let's do it as if we've done it before. We'll use our uh, network player and we'll fetch it in the awake function. And uh, on take damage, we will uh, use that. Uh, so we have our network player and player ah, nickname and two string. Awesome, so uh, let's save and go back into Unity. So let's try that. All right, let's join Freddy. We'll get our clients that I've just compiled. And here we go. All right, Freddy fell off the world. Awesome, so best is joining as well. And let's join in the other client. Uh, Ah, 
best and we will call it Eddie. All right, perfect. So Eddie joined, Eddie fell off the world. And uh, here we have uh, Freddy. So uh, let's have Eddie killed Freddy. Perfect. And Eddie will kill best now. Uh, and uh, yeah, Eddie is pretty awesome. So he's killing everybody. Best. Oh yeah, we forgot that, that we are uh, leaving our um, UI text behind when the player is dying. So we need to fix that. Uh, so Eddie is pretty awesome, but Eddie got disconnected. So he left and then our best left as well. All right, perfect. So luckily solving that problem is not that difficult. Uh, let's go into our prefabs and our network player. Uh, so I accidentally made the world space canvas a child of our network player. Uh, but the model here gets uh, hidden uh, when a player is di uh, well, dies. Uh, so if we just move this and make it a child under our model instead, uh, then uh, that will get hidden when the model as well gets hidden by uh, the code that is executing when a player is dead. Uh, so let's just save and uh, now that works as well. So another problem uh, that uh, actually my kids noticed when they were testing this game is that if you are joining the game and if you are playing as a client, so let's make room for a client that I already compiled and uh, yeah, then you join the game and if you are running backwards and firing you can kill yourself or if you're shooting and jumping so that's not uh, very good and uh, I checked around uh, the reason for this and it's something to do with uh, how the ray costs are being created and uh, that uh, the object is, is being moved at the same time so uh, the solution to this is actually to uh, upgrade uh, fusion to a later version uh, so if you are using 1.1.1 1 .1 uh, with build 512 uh, then you actually get a new option. So if you go into the weapon handler, I up just upgraded now, uh, then there is a new option called ignore input uh, authority on your ray costs. So this solves that whole problem. So uh, if we try that uh, again and uh, compile the game so uh, then uh, let's load uh, the game and uh, press join and uh, let's bring in our client as well there we have it so let's join with Eddie so if we run backwards and fire and jump and fire we can see that we can no longer kill ourselves which is great and we can still shoot the other player so now it is working better uh, perfect I'd like to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters. It helps us with every single contribution that we can get. So please uh, consider supporting us on Patreon. The link is in the description. This concludes this episode and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and the bell to get a notification when the next video is out.